All temptation is rooted in our legitimate need. However, the enemy, he does a great job exploiting our legitimate needs, which turn into sin. Now, all temptations start out with a unmet need. And it's so important for you and I to do a self-assessment every day to see what areas are in our life that are vulnerable to the enemy. Now, the Bible says in James chapter 1, verses 13, 13 through 18, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot tempt, be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then after the desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin when it's fully grown gives birth to death. Now, the most common areas of needs and the needs of feeling accepted, significant and secure, when those needs are not met, we search for ways to get them fulfilled and you and I know that but typically what we do is we fill them through inappropriate means such as temptation and distraction and we can give a big list of examples of that but when we really should be seeking to fulfill those needs through Christ but we don't so what does this mean every person has temptation have you ever been in a marriage where your sexual needs have not been met that's a legitimate need, sexual intimacy. But since you're not getting that need fulfilled by your partner, what comes to your mind is how should I get that need fulfilled, right? So the enemy starts working really fast. You can either have good or bad thoughts. Now, here's what the Bible says about having thoughts. It says that what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For what is from within, out of a person's heart, that is evil thoughts, comes sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. And all of this comes from out of a person. The Bible says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. That's in Psalms 139. We are instructed to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge and power of God. And we are to bring in captivity every thought and put it into obedience to Christ. Now, if you have an evil thought of, I will cheat on my spouse to get my physical needs met since she or he is not fulfilling it and it comes to your mind, you have one or two things that you typically will do. You will immediately take that thought into captivity and acknowledge that, hey, this is not a good thought. Let me get rid of it and let me be obedient to the Spirit of God. Or two, you'll ruminate on that thought and it will then turn into an emotion about the thoughts that you're having that are inappropriate, which then leads to inappropriate beliefs and that turns into inappropriate behavior. Now, here's an example. We all want to feel belonging and accepted by others. And that can be through companionship, closeness, or communication. And we want to feel consistency in the same behavior through harmony, empathy, and loving interactions with either our partners or a relationship or even our family or at work. Now, we want to be nurtured. We want to be respected. And that includes intimacy with our spouses. Now, when this need goes unmet, we search for other alternatives to fulfill that need. And that could be through other people pleasing, defining our self-worth, others' opinions. We are not getting our needs, intimate needs met through our spouse, so we may get caught up in lustful actions or adulterous affairs. And if we don't feel significant, <laughs> we look for a career goal, we get ambitious, so we feel like we need to accomplish higher heights because you know it, we gotta, we gotta get that title, we gotta get that position and power and feel significant about our name. And when we don't feel secure, we seek security through physical wealth or a position of power, always seeking control or we wanna dominate others. All these things are temptations and they are fulfilled appropriate God-given desires by inappropriate means. The unseen enemy will strategically, literally set up people, places, and things to exploit that God-given desire in you. And in order to prevent it from turning into a sin, that unmet need turns into you entertaining someone at your work or your, your co-worker, somebody that's beautiful, that compliments you every day, that thought that you should have coffee with that person and the belief that it's just 
harmless banter. It actually turns into an action that leads you to, to hanging out more physically, often. And then next thing you know, you're talking more on the phone. It's just simple, harmless conversation. Because the more conversation, the more intimate it becomes. And not only are you connecting with them emotionally, which leads to full-blown manifestation of sin by sleeping with your coworker. Now, the initial thought when not addressed and disposed of has now become an action of sin, a godly desire that has been perverted into lust and adultery. The enemy is quick, he's wise. And we are told he is like a warring lion. Be sober and mindful and watch. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to someone who he can devour. The only way to fulfill these God-given desires and needs is through understanding what Yahweh says about them. Yahweh says you are chosen. You are accepted, loved, and belong to him. Yahweh says you are significant. And it is because he has given you purpose to serve others, love others, and do good in the world. Not from your title, not from a position or your achievements or accomplishments. God says that you are secure. And although you may have physical struggle, that he will take care of your needs. And you can be assured that this struggle is this life, in this life, is temporary. Every circumstance, your survival is directly related to your ability to find the truth in God's word that addresses your life circumstances. And once you apply that truth of God's word, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and stay steadfast and unwavering, not double-minded. We have to make sure that we submit ourselves to God and resist the devil in order for him to flee. We have to draw near to God and he will draw near to us. We have to be purified in our hearts and have clean hands and not be double-minded. That's the only way that we can fulfill and be blessed in God. I hope this blessed you.